The Swift Programming Language, 5.6 edition, book copyrighted by Apple and made available under the Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 International License. Optional Chaining. Optional chaining is a process for querying and calling properties, methods, and subscripts on an optional that might currently be nil. If the optional contains a value, the property, method, or subscript call succeeds. If the optional is nil, the property, method, or subscript call returns nil. Multiple queries can be chained together, and the entire chain fails gracefully if any link in the chain is nil. Note, optional chaining in Swift is similar to messaging nil in Objective-C, but in a way that works for any type and that can be checked for success or failure. Optional chaining as an alternative to forced unwrapping. You specify optional chaining by placing a question mark after the optional value on which you wish to call a property, method, or subscript if the optional is non-nil. This is very similar to placing an exclamation point after an optional value to force the unwrapping of the value. The main difference is that the optional chaining fails gracefully when the optional is nil, whereas forced unwrapping triggers a runtime error when the optional is nil. To reflect the fact that optional chaining can be called on a nil value, the result of an optional chaining call is always an optional value, even if the property, method, or subscript you are querying returns a non-optional value. You can use this optional return value to check whether the optional chaining call was successful. The returned optional contains a value or did not succeed due to a nil in the chain. The returned optional value is nil. Specifically, the result of an optional chaining call is of the same type as the expected return value, but wrapped in an optional. A property that normally returns an int will return an optional int when accessed through optional chaining. The next several code snippets demonstrate how optional chaining differs from forced unwrapping and enables you to check for success. First, two classes called person and residence are defined. Residence instances have a single integer property called number of rooms with the default value of 1. Person instances have an optional residence property of type optional residence. If you create a new person instance, its residence property is initialized to nil by virtue of being an optional. In the code below, John has a residence property value of nil. If you try to access the number of rooms property of this person's residence by placing an exclamation point after residence to force the unwrapping of its value, you trigger a runtime error because there is no residence value to unwrap. This code succeeds when john.residence has a non-nil value and will set room count to an integer value containing the appropriate number of rooms. However, this code always triggers a runtime error when residence is nil. Optional chaining provides an alternative way to access the value of number of rooms. To use optional chaining, use a question mark in place of the exclamation point. This tells Swift to chain on the optional residence property and to retrieve the value of numbers of rooms if residence exists. Because the attempt to access number of rooms has the potential to fail, the optional chaining attempt returns a value of type optional int. When residence is nil, as in this example, the optional nint will also be nil to reflect the fact that it was not possible to access number of rooms. The optional int is accessed through optional binding to unwrap the integer and assign the non-optional value to the room count constant. Note that this is true even though number of rooms is a non-optional int. The fact that it is queried through an optional chain means that the call to number of rooms will always return an optional int instead of an int. You can assign a residence instance to john.residence so that it no longer has a nil value. john.residence now contains an actual residence instance rather than nil. If you try to access number of rooms with the same optional chaining as before, it will now return an optional int that contains the default number of rooms value of 1. Defining model classes for optional chaining. You can use optional chaining with calls to properties, methods, and subscripts that are more than one level deep. This enables you to drill down into sub-properties within complex models of interrelated types and to check whether it is possible to access those properties, methods, and subscripts on those sub-properties. The code snippets below define four model classes for use in several subsequent examples, including examples of multi-level optional chaining. 
These classes expand upon the person and residence model from above by adding a room and an address class with associated properties, methods, and subscripts. The person class is defined in the same way as before. The residence class is more complex than before. This time, the residence class defines a variable property called rooms, which is initialized with an empty array of type array of room. Because this version of residence stores an array of room instances, its number of rooms property is implemented as a computed property, not a stored property. The computed number of rooms property simply returns the value of the count property from the rooms array. As a shortcut to accessing its rooms array, this version of residence provides a read-write subscript that provides access to the room at the requested index in the rooms array. This version of residence also provides a method called print number of rooms, which simply prints the number of rooms in the residence. Finally, residence defines an optional property called address, which is a type optional address. The address class type for this property is defined later. The room class used for the rooms array is a simple class with one property called name and an initializer to set that property to a suitable room name. The final class in this model is called address. This class has three optional properties of type optional string. The first two properties, building name and building number, are alternative ways to identify a particular building as part of an address. The third property, street, is used to name the street for that address. The address class also provides a method called building identifier, which has a return type of optional string. This method checks the properties of the address and returns building name if it has a value or building number concatenated with street if both have values or nil otherwise. Accessing properties through optional chaining. As previously demonstrated, you can use optional chaining to access a property on an optional value and to check if that property access is successful. Using the classes defined above to create a new person instance, we try to access its number of rooms property as before. Because john.residence is nil, this optional chaining call fails in the same way as before. We can also attempt to set a property's value through optional chaining. In this example, the attempt to set the address property of john.residence will fail because john.residence is currently nil. The assignment is part of the optional chaining, which means that none of the code on the right-hand side of the equal operator is evaluated. In the previous example, it is not easy to see that some address is never evaluated because accessing a constant does not have any side effects. This listing does the same assignment, but it uses a function to create the address. The function prints function was called before returning a value, which lets you see whether the right-hand side of the equal operator is evaluated. You can tell that the create address function is not called because nothing is printed. Calling methods through optional chaining. You can use optional chaining to call a method on an optional value and to check whether that method call is successful. You can do this even if that method does not define a return value. The print number of rooms method on the residence class prints the current value of number of rooms. Here's how the method looks. This method does not specify a return type. However, functions and methods with no return type have an implicit return type of void as described in functions without return values. This means that they return a value of void or an empty tuple. If you call this method on an optional value with optional chaining, the method's return type will be optional void, not void, because return values are always of an optional type when called through op optional chaining. This enables you to use an if statement to check whether it was possible to call the prints number of rooms method even though the method does not itself define a return value. Compare the return value from the print number of rooms call against nil to see if the method call was successful. The same is true if you attempt to set a property through optional chaining. This example attempts to set an address value for john.residence even though the residence property is nil. Any attempt to set a property through optional chaining returns a value of type optional void, which enables you to compare against nil to see if the property was set successfully. Accessing subscripts through optional chaining. You can use optional chaining to try to retrieve and set a value from a subscript on an optional value and to check whether that subscript's call is successful. Note, when you access a subscript on an optional value through optional chaining, you place the question mark before the subscript's brackets, not after. 
the optional chaining question mark always follows immediately after the part of the expression that is optional. This example tries to retrieve the name of the first room in the rooms array of the john.residence property using the subscript defined on the residence class. Because john.residence is currently nil, the subscript call fails. The optional chaining question mark in the subscript call is placed immediately after john.residence before the subscript brackets. Because john.residence is the optional value on which optional chaining is being attempted. Similarly, you can try to set a new value through a subscript with optional chaining. This subscript setting attempt also fails because residence is currently nil. If you create and assign an actual residence instance to john.residence with one or more room instances in its room array, you can use the residence subscript to access the actual items in the rooms array through optional chaining. Accessing subscripts of optional type. If a subscript returns a value of optional type, such as the key subscript of Swift's dictionary type, place a question mark after the subscript's closing bracket to chain on the optional return value. This example defines a dictionary called test scores, which contains two key value pairs that map a string key to an array of integer values. The example uses optional chaining to set the first item in the Dave array to 91, to increment the first item in the Bev array, and to set the first item in an array for a key of Brian. The first two calls succeed because the test scores dictionary contains keys for Dave and Bev. The third call fails because the test scores dictionary does not contain a key for Brian. Linking multiple levels of chaining. You can link together multiple levels of optional chaining to drill down to properties, methods, and subscripts deeper within a model. However, multiple levels of optional chaining do not add more levels of optionality to the return value. To put it another way, if the type you are trying to retrieve is not optional, it will become optional because of the optional chaining. If the type you are trying to retrieve is already optional, it will not become more optional because of the chaining. Therefore, if you try to retrieve an int value through optional chaining, an optional int is always returned, no matter how many levels of chaining are used. Similarly, if you try to retrieve an optional int value through optional chaining, an optional int is always returned, no matter how many levels of chaining are used. This example tries to access the street property of the address property of the residence property of John. There are two levels of optional chaining in use here to chain through the residence and address properties, both of which are of optional type. The value of john.residence currently contains a valid residence instance. However, the value of john.residence.address is currently nil. Because of this, the call to john.residence.address.street fails. Note that in this example, you are trying to retrieve the value of the street property. The type of this property is optional string. The return value of john.optionalresidence.optionaladdress.street is therefore also optional string, even though two levels of optional chaining are applied in addition to the underlying optional type of the property. If you set an actual address instance as the value for john.residence.address and set an actual value for the address's street property, you can access the value of the street property through multi-level optional chaining. In this example, the attempt to set the address property of john.residence will succeed because the value of john.residence currently contains a valid residence instance. Chaining on methods with optional return values. The previous example shows how to retrieve the value of a property of optional type through optional chaining. You can also use optional chaining to call a method that returns a value of optional type and to chain on that method's return value if needed. This example calls the address class's building identifier method through optional chaining. This method returns a value of type optional string. As described above, the ultimate return type of this method call after optional chaining is also optional string. If you want to perform further optional chaining on this method's return value, place the optional chaining question mark after the method's parentheses. Note, 
In the example above, you place the optional chaining question mark after the parentheses because the optional value you are chaining on is the building identifier methods return value, not the building identifier method itself.